so initially we started brainstorming ideas over the summer really about all the possible uh, problems we could actually attempt and solve. Um, but as we really started doing more and more research, what we ended up finding was uh, the safety issues associated with forklifts really were a very prominent problem and there weren't too many solutions already developed um, that could really uh, solve the problems being presented. So there had been some, obviously, that we uh, came across as we researched, but um, some of the areas such as dealing with uh, stability, particularly tip-overs of forklifts, and also, um, as a visibility team will probably tell you, uh, being able to see around or over uh, large loads that are on the forklift forks um, really hadn't been addressed in a way that was uh, particularly useful for the operator, or at least that. Uh, so we didn't tried get to aim uh, and develop a solution that wouldn't uh, have those sort of negative aspects. Do you want to add on? Oh, sure. You want to show me the actual? Okay, we yeah. go over well, here. You can explain how it works if you like. Uh, that would be great. Yeah. It's on this side. <laughs> so, you want me to explain a little bit? It doesn't matter, or, whatever. So, initially um, we started developing uh, something of a counterweight, um, but over time, about halfway through the year, we really uh, kind of came to the realization that it just simply wasn't going to be uh, feasible. Because we had done research, the materials that we need were um, costing almost $400 an ounce, and with the space restrictions in the bottom of the forklift, it just simply wasn't practical. So we started to brainstorm and again and um, reevaluate the problem from a different angle. So what we decided was, as we started going back through all these cases we had reviewed in the beginning of the year, um, about why exactly these things tip over and the different accounts from people, we found that a lot in a lot of them. Um, over speeding while uh, the operator happened to be turning the forklift was really a very central issue. So we started to look and try to come up with a device that would not only detect when the forklift was turning but also actively work to slow it down. Um, now given uh, the way the uh, VSM works, the vehicle systems manager on these uh, forklifts work, some of the problems can be alleviated through the use of code that only, but only the manufacturer can actually use it, um, use those VSMs. So people like, say, Thompson & Johnson, who happen to be helping us with this project and have helped us, um, they're a, they rent out forklifts. They are not allowed to uh, uh, mod, excuse me, uh, modify any of that code or even get into the VSM at all. They have to send it directly back to the manufacturer for anything like that. Um, if it needs to be serviced or anything. So what we decided to design was something that would be modular and independent of that, that wouldn't need that interface with the VSM and could be put onto forklifts both that had that restriction or may not have even had onboard computers that would have been able to do those operations anyway. So ultimately what we ended up moving on to was a device that had a steering sensor, which we hooked up in the uh, back of the steering assembly, uh, it consists of a magnetic switch and some steel clamps we fabricated, which detects when the forklift is turning and subsequently sends an impulse to this motor here, and that motor forces up the accelerator pedal, um, regardless of whether the operator is actively pressing down on it or not. So in doing that, um, we limit the speed ultimately, and um, the operator can't overspeed while he's making a turn. And, and once the operator corrects himself or he straightens back out, he straightens the forklift back out, um, the device just goes back to its normal uh, unrotated position and uh, there's no impedance to the uh, pedal. So, do you want to add anything on? I, I no, like well, I there, were, there was like all the matrices and calculations and math done behind it to find what was the ideal the centripetal force, the moment of how the moment of the centripetal force would compare with the moment of the center of gravity of the forklift and determining what speed would be not desirable when the forklift was in the worst possible case scenario with a full load and mast fully extended. So besides the designing, there was a lot of the CAD as well that's back at the table and the math and all of that that helped come up with the design idea that was we're showing you right now. Okay, well we started out with the problem of the uh, of forklift um, visibility issues 
So uh, where a forklift operator has uh, difficulty seeing around something. Uh, so we focused on uh, visibility in the front of the forklift. So the device that we have, we call the periscopic viewport. And what it allows the operator to do is uh, to see above a really tall load. And uh, really tall loads that are exceedingly tall uh, are not that uncommon for forklifts. Um, to carry, especially in certain applications such as uh, like a newspaper roll uh, is uh, just uh, in those applications um, you'll, the operator has little to none vision in the uh, straight ahead. So what this device allows uh, an operator to do is to see above tall loads uh, while keeping uh, the peripheral vision. Uh, it's only about a foot wide, the viewport. What it is, is it's got two mirrors that are mounted on the inside at 45 degree angles here and here. And uh, so the operator will see through here and uh, see whatever's being uh, projected through there, allowing them to see above a tall load. And it is angled slightly forward because uh, the operator doesn't want to see what's straight ahead. They want to see what's slightly down so they don't hit someone or something, As, uh, especially if they have a heavy load. It could, it could cause serious damage or serious injury to somebody. Uh, so we made this uh, with this part has uh, different adjustments that can be made um, easily for different operator heights. And uh, it also has the ability to, when the operator isn't using it to be uh, moved in the, into a, uh, the not in use position uh, where the operator uh, can see whatever they would normally see in a, re a regular forklift if there's no load or the, lo the load isn't too high. And then after that we uh, made it so the sections where the mirrors are are uh, attached with this velcro and then you could raise these up and have the ability to remove a damaged or dirty mirror like so and then you could these are also made out of polycarbonate so they won't shatter and send shards down towards the operator and then you could just clean it and in case anything would try and damage the actual mirror surface there's a 3 8 inch thick piece of polycarbonate here to stop anything from coming in and then you can just flip this back down Seal it back up with the Velcro, and then you're ready to go.